All right, so something you've talked a lot about on your podcast is how wrestlers need to learn how to sell. And after listening to your show so much, you know, it's, it's really changed a lot personally how I watch matches. Uh, you know, I think guys like AJ Styles are some of the best at selling right now, uh, as long with guys like Kevin Owens and Ziggler. Uh, my question to you is, um, what should a wrestler do to be effective at selling? Uh, and especially, what's the difference between how a face wrestler should sell versus how a heel should sell? Well, there's, first of all, uh, pro wrestlers have to understand that there are different levels of selling. You don't sell everything, every move that you you have been afflicted with the same. Uh, if you're if somebody gives you a superplex off the top rope, you're obviously going to sell that differently than you're going to sell a snapmare takeover. So I think it's recognizing that there are varying levels of selling, and that uh, and the other thing is uh, don't expose the business by forgetting to sell. You know I've seen guys. Uh, take a turnbuckle or take a ring post to their shoulder and not even reach their arm like it hurts, uh, they forget. And I, uh, that, that's a very uh, disheartening. It's a lack of concentration and it's a lack of refinement as far as your entering skills are concerned. So I think the main thing guys have to learn about selling is learn to sell based on what, you, what happened to you. Uh, learn to sell with your head up and learn to sell with continuity so that you're all of a sudden that bad arm that you, the guy has been working on for the last several minutes has miraculously healed like you've had a religious experience. It's just a matter of concentration, uh, focus, and it is a major part of a pro wrestling match. Uh, if wrestlers aren't selling or they're wrestling so quickly that uh, it's hard to process what they're doing and keep up with it, then they're making a great mistake. They're doing more than they need to do. And I think that one of the reasons there's probably more injuries right now than one would ideally like to uh, discuss is because wrestlers work too fast. They take uh, an inordinate amount of uh, hard-to-protect bumps, and so consequently it's, it's, uh, they're asking for more nagging injuries or major injuries. So I think the, the thing the business needs to do is they're on a different dangerous trend of not selling, doing too much, and then you've got to do all these. They, the, the wrestlers seem to think, some wrestlers seem to think that selling is a sign of weakness. And selling is a sign of reality. Because if it's real, you're going to sell. Look at it, the MMA guys sell. Boxers sell because it's real. They're selling reality. Well, you're supposed to be able to replicate reality in a pro wrestling match. So by eliminating selling and, and then working too fast, where you're, tech, you're putting your body at risk too often. Uh, it's probably not uh, a good investment of their time or their or their future, quite frankly. So, uh, but selling is a, is a key element, and I you don't die when you sell. Baby faces can't die, or they they have to keep the audience connected. That I'm trying to turn the corner. I'm trying to get back on the advantage, but I'm not giving up. Uh, they almost have a they can have a metamorphosis in a, in a, a sorts that when they sell. Uh, it's, you know, they're in dire straits and they're in big pain. They're not as tough as they were when they're on the offensive. So you want that great contrast between a villain uh, on the offense and a villain selling. But for a baby face, fan favorite, the long as you never allow your audience to perceive that you are throwing the towel in, that you are, that you can't, you're not tough, uh, you're going to give up on them. Even if you go down fighting, they'll still respect you and support you. So there's a whole psychology, psychological component to selling that a lot of wrestlers, just because of the way they're trained, uh, just haven't mastered. And until they do, they're not going to be as good as they can be. Yeah, excellent, excellent way to put it. Uh, now, last question, Mr. Ross, since I know we got to go home now. Um, I, I'd love to hear a story from you about either having a rib pulled on you or pulling a rib on a wrestler. Uh, do you have any of those stories you can share with us that won't get you in too much trouble, I should say? No, the, the, I, uh, I, you know, we've all had ribs pulled on us. I've had my bag... Uh, uh, padlocked my briefcase padlocked to the uh, to the uh, ceiling uh, in a locker room and the pipes uh, the plumbing so I took my briefcase put up there and put a padlock around it which was uh, Owen Hart and, and Davey Boy Smith were the culprits of that one I had to get the uh, uh, engineer uh, from the arena to bring bolt cutters and cut my bag off the ceiling that was one I had another one where Owen Hart was walking, saw me come down the hall. I've been in a meeting all day with some talent, going over some uh, disciplinary issues. He knew I had a tough day, so he, he comes out of catering with a 
powdered sugar from a donut all over his nose. He was staggering like he was uh, drunk. And he was trying to make me think he'd been doing cocaine. So obviously he didn't know anything about cocaine because if you do cocaine, you're not going to be acting drunk. You're going to be, you know, sky high, hyper as a rule, I'm told. Uh, so uh, he uh, tried to cheer me up in a, in a, in a roundabout way. It, it was a funny, it was it was funny at the moment, and uh, but he was a, he was part of the, the great river of all time, a one heart. Uh, anybody that's been around him can you know give you chapter and verse about his uh, his ribs, and they never ended. He was always looking for the next one. So it wasn't like you know he did it, he'd, he'd do it, then he would disappear for a few weeks. He was always there to always looking for the next one. So uh, he was great. I think that today's guys in the wrestling rib less than their predecessors and they do it uh, you know I remember Terry Taylor came there and had some he was some guys that came to WWE and he had a nice suit and while he was in the ring uh, wrestling someone took scissors and, and, and cut his sh- suit to shreds oh no down, <laughs> r- ruined it so you can go over the top of these ribs there's ribs that are uncalled for and can't and un- intolerable and there are others like the one heart rib with me uh, was or funny so uh, ribs can run their course one way or the other but uh, they don't seem to be as prevalent nowadays as they used to be but I think the one that's harmless uh, you know I had to get the guy from the building to cut my back down and that was everybody got a laugh out of that and I laughed with them if you laugh with them they're less likely to come back and nail you again as opposed to overselling it and being angrier or so concerned about it as uh, it, it, it appears to be an issue you got to protect yourself there to for repeat business, so I, you know, sell it, you laugh, and you got me that time, and you move on, so, uh, it's, a, uh, it's just part of the business, you know, and it's, I'm sure it's the same way in the NFL, or NBA, or whatever, it's, a, uh, you know, that's what guys do, they're sophomores, they're, they're perpetual, everlasting sophomores, <laughs> and sophomores act like sophomores. All right, well, Mr. Ross, looks like our time is coming to an end, unfortunately, for today. Uh, and it's sad because I didn't even get a chance to get you to do a Terry Funk or Stu Hart impersonation, but hopefully that'll be for the next time. Um, so for all you listeners out there, you can listen to Jim Ross and Josh Barnett starting this Friday, March 4th, commentating on New Japan Pro Wrestling on Access TV at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and make sure you download the Fight app. And if you want to hear more from JR, of course, do check out his show on Podcast One. You'll be doing your ears a great disservice by not listening to that. You need to hear it, listen to all those great interviews. It's like a master class in combat sports. Uh, Mr. Ross, this has been amazing and, and a great pleasure, and I thank you very much for being here. I hope we can do it again sometime. No problem, Matthew. Appreciate your time. All right, thank you. Have a good day.